<laughs> oh, good morning from Ireland. So, good morning, everybody. Hope you are all well and ready to have a look at what we've got to show you today with a very wonky camera and goodness knows what. We'll sort something out about that. <laughs> So we have got some lovely new embossing folders to show you today on the Sunday special um, with different products to use for them and all sorts, really. So let's take a look. You like the nail varnish? Yeah. How about that? I must be bored. Um, it's called The Spy Who Loves Me. How about that? eh? Goodness knows why it's called that, I'm sure. Um, but yes, so you're not supposed to be looking at the nail varnish. You're supposed to be looking at what we've got here. All right. But you can look at the nail varnish at the same time. So we have got four new 3D embossing folders from Nelly Snellen. And they are really lovely, as all of their embossing folders are. Um, and today's special, you can buy all four of them as a bundle over on the Facebook Live section, or you can buy them individually. So there's no um you know no way like that or you can just watch and not buy any of them and just see what you can do with them it doesn't really matter really um so yes i'm glad you found out how to chat i have discovered that one of the biggest things on here is that you should sign in in order to be able to chat so when you look at your picture you should be able to see a little chat a uh, little signed in button on the top right hand of your corner of your page there. Um, let me just see if I can get that for you so that you can see. For those of you who maybe are still struggling, um, if you look at my phone here, you can see that there's a little symbol, which is my maximum craft symbol up on the top there and that means that I'm actually signed in to the YouTube account okay so if you've got one of those like silhouette pictures you know the sort which just shows the picture of a person it means that you're not signed in and therefore I understand you wouldn't be able to comment okay so there you go yeah I am Miss Money Penny. <laughs> a bond girl I never thought I would be but here I am a bond girl yeah, it, it's a it's, uh, nail varnish I had for a long time ago, but it is rather yummy, isn't it? So we're not looking at my nails. Right, so the embossing folders. As I said, there are four. So let me just show you. We have got this one, which is the roses, and it's a 13 by 13, oh, beg your pardon, no, 15 by 15 centimetres. So it's quite a nice size, six by six for the roses. Then there's another one, rose corner which is again the same size and then we've got flower frame which is the um, 10 by 15 10 and a half by 15 so that's more like your a6 size and then we've got this lovely cross and I know that uh, the cross is sort of very limited as to what one could use it for but at the same time it's so beautiful that it might well be something that you really um, you know, want want to use for certain occasions. So I have cut some out. I'm going to show you bits and pieces that you can do with them. Um, different mediums, different colours and all sorts. So here are my folders. OK. And as I said, I have cut them out in different ways and we'll have a go with all of them. OK. So here is the uh, cross. Isn't that beautiful? And as I said, it's not for everybody's cup of tea. And unfortunately, it is a fairly limited. I suppose it could be for christenings and that sort of thing. But one has to say that it looks more like a condolence card. But what a beautiful condolence card. So let me just show you what we could be doing with that. So. Um, I've cut that out, sorry, I've cut out a piece of card first and I've used um, watercolour card for it 
Um, you could use any card, but I just wanted to put a little bit of watercolour on it, which is why I've done it on the watercolour card. And it did seem to sort of take quite well like that. So I'm going to take some of my eyes ink colours and I'm just going to take the eyes ink dye in Verveen, which is a light green. I'm going to put some of that on my mat here, my blending mat. And I'm going to pick up my watercolour card, um, watercolour pen, aqua pen. I'm just going to take a little bit of the colour and all I want to do is put it onto these little stamens here. So a little hint of green. Let me just bring the camera in so that you can see what I'm doing there. OK. So. So it's just a hint of green onto the stamens. I think that you, you know, you could colour them, obviously. But for, for the reason why I want to use this card in particular, I need to have it just a little bit of colour. OK. It's very pretty, isn't it? Are you liking it? Watching me on the telly, Di? Oh, God. Well, it's a blooming good job you haven't got a close-up then, isn't it? <laughs> so then I'm just going to take a little bit more of the green and I'm just going to bring that out from the centre of my card, uh, of my flowers there, so that it is just a hint of colour just in the very centre of it. Can you see that? Just a hint of colour. All right. And I'm just going to put a bit more. And really, do you know, I don't know that that needs any more than just that for that one. I think it needs to be white, personally. Um, and uh, I have, she says, looking around as to what have I done with them. Um, put in a safe place. I finished one card up like that, and what I've all I've done is I've put one of the um, uh, vintage silver or silver pearl or whatever it's called. Can't think now. Um, no, let's get it right. Steel foundation pearl cards behind it because I didn't want anything bright, um, but just sort of I didn't really want to put black around it. Uh, my dad's from Germany, and um, it, when they have a death um, announced there, everything is sent with a very, very thin black border. Envelopes, cards, announcements, it's all quite big business out there for that type of thing. Um, so over there, they would put a very thin black border. But anyway, um, you know, you could add with sympathy to it. But I just think that that's enough. I just think it's really lovely, just like that myself. OK, so that is the cross with lilies, that one is called. OK, so which one should we go for next? So this one's a bit different. This one is the flower frame and I've cut that one out of black card. The reason being that I've got some of the Cosmic Shimmer opal polishes here. And I wanted to use some of those. They are tiny little pots of yumminess. And I thought we'd have a go with those. But I've also got some of the uh, Mica Magic because the two are going to go together beautifully for this. So I've done it on black. And I'll show you in a little while a half done card of what we could go with it but let me just show you what this sort of thing looks like on black so let me take my goldy colors so my metallics my metallics in mica magic and remember if you haven't used mica magic before mica magic is a cream based um powder so it won't go off um, you don't need to add water to it, although one could. But in this case, I'm just going to use my finger and I'm going to rub this over all of the embossed thing. And I'm going to take some of the different colours. So I'm going to take some of the golds. You can see how already that is absolutely popping. And then I'm going to take a, a deeper gold, for the leaf down here. And so it's only sort of very subtle effects. So I'm just picking it up with my finger and rubbing it over the embossed areas. So it looks, it gives it sort of more of a metallic finish and you can 
put more over. Um, can't take it off, but you can put more over. So I'll take some of the different colours so that you've got a brighter one. And <clears throat> we just go all the way around. You can see how it beautifully picks it out. This would um, really take a lovely in the centre sentiment, a sort of gold sentiment or something like that. Um, maybe again the gold luster card as opposed to the gold mirror card because the mirror card might look a little bit too bright but you can mix and match you can see what you think is the best I'm just going all the way around with it and it just picks up it's I hope you can see that it's so defined um, but yeah I agree Sarah usually if you were doing black you would think oh gosh hold on a minute um, but actually black and then picked out like this can look really look quite different so that's going around with the mica magic and you can just pick up a bit more as you wish in different places like that okay let's put that to one side and then going to take um gilded avocado so these little pots are the um cosmic shimmer and they are called opal blaze polish so they are yes it would look lovely yeah yeah um they are a funny sort of thing a little pot and inside all of them look very similar they all look like a white polish. So this one, as I say, is gilded avocado. This one is sunset orange. But put the two pots together and you'd be hard pushed to see what the difference is until you actually put them on the card. So let's use that one in a second. Just want to wipe my fingers off because I've got my Mica Magic on that and I don't want to mix the two. So... This one is the Gilded Avocado, and I'm just going to take a little bit with my finger. You can possibly see that very, very shiny, loads of mica in there. And I'm just now going to pick up with a sheen to it even more so. So there's so much mica on here. And just pick that up as well. So... Doing it in this way would really give rise to a fantastic um, mixed media type of thing. And if anyone caught sight of uh, Stamps by Me yesterday, or maybe the day before, um, they were using not a stencil, um, not an embossing folder. They were using a stamp, but with a similar sort of um, idea to it. And I thought that if you caught sight of that, that was really lovely. Um, and I'll show you how I was thinking of using it in just a second. So I'm just rubbing, rubbing over. It dries instantly, the same as the um, Mica Magic does. But it's so you've got that coppery, goldy colour underneath, but then you've got this blaze of colour on the top. And depending on where you shine the light, it'll either pick it up as a brownie colour or a green. It's really or a coppery colour. It's really pretty. Fiona, goodness me. Um, I'm going to sort of, now I've got the YouTube app and at last I'm joining in. Oh, well, that is brilliant. Good job. You've got a good member of staff there. That's excellent. So what I was thinking of doing with this, I have taken one here and I've actually, so I've done the same thing, but I've actually cut it out. So I've cut out not only the aperture, but I've left a little bit there. All right. So I've cut out this top bit here. And then I thought that if again, if you looked at the YouTube for. Um, uh, what did I just say? Stamps by me. The idea would be going very mixed media. I know this is the thing that I've sprayed up with eye zinc dye sprays. Some done some while ago. Um, and I just think that if you had that with a, a dark sentiment here, um, it would really look lovely. And it's just something very, very different other than your pink. Um, this is one I did here with just the pinks that I've 
got picked up in it on white card. Um, and that's just Mica Magic Pink. So that's nothing um, spectacular on that in terms of all of the different products that I've put on here. But again, if you could think of a dark sentiment on the top of that, I think that that would look really pretty. So that was using some of the um, opal polish, opal blaze polish, I should say, and uh, the Mica Magic. Okay. So let's just move that to one side. So now I'm going to take the roses one and I have done them in the two different um, types here. So I have done one on white card and one on black because I just wanted to show you two different ways that you could do this. So if we go for the black one first, I'm going to do that with the polishes. So I'm going to use um, the Gilded Avocado again, because that's, as we know, got a greeny hint to it. And then I'm going to try pink blueberry, I reckon. So again, when you open up the top and open the lid up, they look exactly the same as they did just a white polish. When you um, sh when you do sort of just, uh, sorry, you do move that around, you can see a slight hint. I'm not sure if you can on the camera here, but you can see a slight hint. So I'm just going to take this onto the roses. So I'm going to pick it up with my finger and I'm just going to go over the roses with the pink blueberry so it's got a touch of pink and if you hold it to a different light it's got a touch of blue again not 100% sure if you can see it. I do hope you can can you see the different colors everybody yeah yes I'm glad you managed to join us I think that the YouTube I have tried it so many times with people so hoping that we that people are able well, and they clearly are able to join me um, and don't forget that if you can't comment and would like to comment um it it's sort of um one crucial thing is that you need to be signed in for it um but i think that it is a better medium it doesn't seem to buffer too much and i think that that's quite important because it's I was watching someone on the the other day on a face Facebook live again and oh goodness me she said everything about three times because it kept jumping and I know that's not her fault but it's really frustrating watching it and I would be frustrated which is why I wanted to try and get something that was slightly better okay so I think I've done all the roses and all the buds so that's the pink blueberry and then I'm going to go over the leaves with the gilded avocado because that's more of a greeny goldy colour. So I'm just going to pick up that as I'm going. And so the blaze polish, opal blaze polish, obviously is hu huge amounts of mica in it. And I think I'm right in saying that they say it's got an interference so that you can look at it in one light and it's different in another light. So it is quite different. OK, they are lovely, aren't they? Oh, I'm glad you fed the dog, Rosemary. We don't want any hungry animals, which reminds me that if anyone listened to me wittering on two or three weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was saying about our tortoise. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that he suddenly decided he does want to live after all and he's actually eating. He had decided that he didn't want to eat. He didn't go into hibernation because he's only a baby and he'd been eating all winter long, no problem whatsoever. Sunshine comes out and he says, blow that for a laugh, I ain't eating no more. But in the last two days, we have turned a corner um, and he has decided that life is worthwhile after all and he is eating. I'm so pleased to tell you that. As I really thought I was going to lose him, poor little thing. So there we are. I have missed a bud, so I've got to go back and do that bud. Can't do it half and half. Just make sure I've got the right colour. No, that's sunset orange. Oh, blimey. Make sure I've got the right one. Pink. There we go. So this is for a, a, a much more of a glitzy finish okay so plenty of bling 
plenty of polish and that's what your opal polishes are going to achieve that really pretty um, polished effect like that okay so that's how it is on black and I'm going to use the Mica Magic now. I know I keep swapping, but it's just to show you that these can be used with any type of medium. Obviously, you can just do them in one um, colour, which I'm going to show you one in just a second. But it, it can be done in all sorts of different ways. And that's what I wanted to show you today. So this is the Mica Magic um, basic colours. And I'm just going to pick up the pink on my finger and I'm just going to find my roses like I did so find my flowers on all of these find the flowers and the buds and just go over them the thicker part will take your ink up first so it will still keep that dimension and this is obviously a very subtle way of using it and if you wanted you could add it with a sponge applicator but I think I get a good result with just using my finger. So nothing um, rocket science on this one in terms of what you're actually using. And I think it's nice the way that if you go over it a second time, you do get the bud of it and a deeper colour, which you probably would do in real life, as it's sort of all folded up. Very pretty. Can you see that for good? Ah. Oh. Yeah, I know, with my blooming um, tortoise, it was such a worry. I don't know, we've got, we have got quite a menagerie. We've got um, three tortoises. The eldest one is 96, and then we have another one which is 36, and then little Bob, who's decided that he didn't want to eat, who's about five now. So he's not really a baby, um, but he thinks he's a dog, actually, because he prefers being with humans than he does with anything else yeah can't be helped and then we've got guinea pigs some of you know that I'm really into the guinea pigs I'm just going to use the green now I'm going to pick up the leaves um, and we've got an iguana and lots of fish goldfish outside and yeah quite a menagerie but when you have when you've got something that just decides it doesn't want to eat, it's blooming difficult because you can't force feed them. But today, all is well. Now we'll start eating us out of house and home again, I reckon. So I'm just going over, picking up all the colours. So this is all Mica Magic that once it's on, especially in this quantity, not a great deal, just picking up the highlights. Um, it will stay on there. You don't have to spray this with um uh hairspray or anything to keep it on because it will stay on um i've just noticed i've missed a couple of buds so that should be a flower so that should be in pink where did i see another bud that should be a flower so that should be in pink oh there we are and that's a bud not a flower okay so Again, you could keep going over, use different colours, use a selection, but that's your Mica Magic. And I have done one earlier of those, and I all I've done is put it onto a 7x7 seven seven card, and I've taken a pink colour from behind just to put a mat on it. Obviously, you might want a sentiment, and I thought maybe just a strip of a sentiment on there. Or you could just keep it like that, which I think is lovely. So... Your mum's had a tortoise. My dad found it his works back in the early 60s. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember those chalks as well. Yeah. Um, I think I've still got the chalks, really, but they were never one of my favourite things, I don't think. I think these are, are fine because you put them on and they're on and it's done. So, and last one. is our rose corner and the other thing I liked about the rose corner and the um, cross with lilies is that the folder also embosses this outer line so that you've got a, a frame to it 
Okay. The card that I'm using is watercolour card. So um, I do think that the black card is nothing special. It's just black card. And I do find that if I wanted to put watercolour on it, it, which I want to do with this one, um, it will just take a, a bit better um, thing there. So, But it's down to the individual. I did find that a 300 gram um, watercolour from um, Crafts 2 or John's or, well, the, the website, really. I'm just trying to find the map there. Um, it, it does tend to pick it up and take the impression really quite nicely. So, so just wanted to use a bit more watercolour here. So we've got our little rose and I'm going to take another one of my colours. I'm going to take the rose dye ink here. Just put it onto my blending mat here. And I'm just going to pick up a very small amount and I'm just going to go from the centre just picking up a bit of colour. However, I am also going to take my, oh no, I won't be able to find it, <laughs> the pink blueberry um, opal polish and I'm going to put tiny amount down onto my um, blending mat because this is water based so I can mix it with a little bit of water and the ink so together because there's a pinky colour in there that's why I've chosen that one and then when I put this on this will give me a very gentle shimmer so it's a little bit like um, Uh, Winker Stella, except that I can make it any colour I like. Okay, so it's it's just taking that little tiny hint of a pink from here, hint of a pink from the actual polish itself, but it's also going to leave me with a beautiful shimmer to it as well, but with a little tinge of colour. I'm not sure if you can actually see that. Can you see that? Hopefully you can, it's catching the light there. And when it dries, it dries with just such a lovely, gentle sparkle, but also with a very pale, well, depending on how much you're going to put on there, with a, a pretty colour on there as well. So then I could take my um, green as well, and then I could just go on to some of the leaves here, just giving it a hint of a colour again. Um, pick some up here. Less is more, you can always add a bit more, but you don't want anything too bright. And you've got some lovely little swirls and curls in there, which um, I will probably leave rather than colouring because they're so fine, it would be a bit difficult to actually use them like that. Oh, it looks like you like them as well. I think they're lovely. When I saw these last week, I thought, oh, I have got to get these. These are so pretty. And so many different occasions. I mean, this one could be a sympathy card as well, really, couldn't it? So I've just done it on white. But if you would do, do it on a different colour, um, that would look very pretty. If you did the, the whole thing in a pink. Um, it's a bit of a different colour there. So, and then um, cut out this sentiment here. I'm just going to put it on some sticky specks just to stick that down because I can't be doing with lots of little bits of glue. So let me just bring, oh, you're looking at the wrong thing. Hold on a second. So just put that onto some sticky specks sheet so that I can pick it all up. Now I've got little micro dots all over it to enable me to stick it on there much easier than with such a fine sentiment. It is more difficult to stick that down. And I know this is white on white, 
but I just thought that it looked really quite attractive just to be white on white. I'm just popping that back into place. Okay. So it's just a hint. It You can clearly see what it says, but it's just white on white with just a little bit of a hint down here and that you could do that in. Yeah, white on white's one of my favourite. Um, and I think that just looks lovely, just white on white. And as I said, you could do that on any of the cards that we've got here today. Um, so a, a sentiment, if you had a with sympathy or something just in white would look very, very nice. And I know I keep on about with sympathy, but sometimes it's one of the most difficult cards we ever have to make. And we don't want to have lots of flowers and all the trimmings with it, but we want something that is just poignant. And I think that that one really fits the bill. So over on uh, the website, MaximumCrafts.com, we've got all of the items that I used. It's all on the Facebook Live. I think I'm going to have to change that, but uh, Facebook Live section. So we've got all of the embossing folders. So you've got this, which is the rose corner. You've got this one, which is the cross and lilies. This one, which is roses. And this one, which is the flower frame. I've also popped on there the opal polishes, if you fancied having a go at those. They're really fun to work with and something very different. So sparkly. Um, and also because they're water resistant, they're easy to clean off and you can even paint with them. You can even... Um, stamp with them as well if you take them out on a sponge and put them onto your stamp and then stamp down they work really beautifully for stamps i've got the mica magic on there as well and there's um all sorts of tips and ideas too i will be putting the cards on facebook for everyone to have a look at later i will be back with you on wednesday which is the 20th of may at 11 o'clock with the wednesday wonder and a um, few tips and ideas of what we're going to be doing those. Can I show you? Let's see what you're all saying. Um, could you show us all the Opal Blaze colours on the card? Well, I haven't got them all down here, but I can show you the ones that I have got. So let me show you. Um, OK, so this one I was playing about with here. So. Basically, if it says pink blueberry, you're going to get a hint of pink and a hint of blueberry. So a mauvey sort of colour. So I'm not sure if you can actually see that, but if I move it, you hopefully can then see that in some cases it's very pink and in other cases it's more of a blue. If I were to put that on the back of this one, because I've already coloured this. So this is on white. There isn't so much of a contrast on white. So if I just rub that into the flower, you will only get a hint, very much so, of the colour, whereas that is really quite a dark colour. So that's the same with a lot of the polishes um, from Cosmic Shimmer, that they are the two tones. So that one was the pink blueberry. Uh, this is the Gilded Avocado. So this is more of a sort of um, goldy colour, but green. So if I put it onto there, it's quite green. And if I put it onto white, it's just a hint of a green. So again, it looks nice on, on white as well. And then the other one I've got here, there I think about eight different colours in the range, sunset orange. Um, and so this one is such a pretty colour. Oh, hold on, let me get a clean finger. I don't want to contaminate. So sunset orange gives you, oh, beautiful, coppery, orangey colour. That's so pretty, I like that. Oh, wouldn't that look nice on there? Hold on, I've got to do that now. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. So lovely to have all the different colour combinations. And when you've got something that picks it up so well, 
because these are so deeply embossed that when you pick that up, liking this. Well, I don't know if you enjoyed today, but I have. <laughs> I've enjoyed. You're having your first haircut. Oh, we're not allowed to have our haircuts until July. Blimey, I'm doing all right then. I'm hoping things are sort of calming down a bit out in Spain for you, Jacqueline. I do hope they are. I hope that they are here as well, more than anything. So here's me just having a bit of a play, but you can see that the different colours, that is just lovely. I just love that. Um, there, As I say, there are about seven or eight of the different colours, but basically if they say, like there's one called teal raspberry, I think, so that in some shades it's a teal colour and in other shades it's a raspberry colour. So it does vary as to what colour you put it on in the first place. Let's put that one onto white as well so that you can see. But on the white, all it does really is give you just a little shimmer. But that is just perfect if you wanted to just highlight something. So let's say if we took, whoops, better not put that colour on there. But let me just say the pink blueberry. I know I've coloured it, but if I just wanted to put a little bit over the top of there, that would just give me a shimmer over the top. So it's not going to colour it. It's not going to change the colour of it, really. But it's going to give me a hint of a colour. More noticeable if I move the card around. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe. There. Um, but you can see the different colours that it's going to give you. Okay. Sort of allowed out now outside our village. Uh, do they dry? Yeah, they dry virtually straight away. That's that's all dry, this one that I've just used. All dry. Um, no heat gun needed. No nothing needed on it at all. It's virtually dry. In fact, actually, if you were going to stamp with it, uh, you would have to be quite quick because um, they would stamp. Let me just hold on a second. Let me find a stamp and show you how it would stamp. Now this is a poinsettia stamp, so clearly it's really not ideal. Take these out of the way for a minute. Pick that randomly, get a piece of card. Hold on a second. Um, piece of card. Right, so I'm going to use one of the blending um, petals and I'm just going to pick it up and just pop it onto my stamp on here. So I'm just, sorry, I've got my hand in the way and everything. So you can just see that I'm just pouncing it up and down onto my stamp. I've chosen this particular stamp because I think it needs to be a fairly solid stamp. If you've got too many details to it, it doesn't work quite so well. So I'm just popping it up and down onto my stamp, closing that over. Pressing down. And when I take that off, can you see that that has, I should have used it on a darker colour. I'm going to have to use it on a darker colour. Because you can see it there, but you can't see it in all its glory. So let's go for all its glory. We need to say it like that as well, don't we? Why not? Seeing as we're here, seeing as we made the effort to get up and be here, why not? So just picking it up. You could put it on with your finger, but it's going to dry on your finger too quickly. So you don't really want to do that. 
So I'm just picking it all up, making sure that all the stamp has been stamped off. To get it off of the stamp, I should just wash the stamp under warm water. It will come off very easily. I'll put that down onto my stamp. And black, I think, will show up better. Yeah, you can see that that's just picking that up and just showing all the different um, shimmer and shine of it. The, the stamp that you use will make a difference, but um, I think that's really quite nice. Quite liking that. And then, as I say, you could spritz this to reactivate it a little bit and you would still get a bit more from it. That probably won't fit on there, will it? Let's have a look. Well, sort of. Hmm, not reactivating it very well there. I think I'd let it dry too quickly. So that is the thing that you do. It does dry very, very quickly. Um, it will easily all come off of there. But uh, it will dry very quickly. But that's one of the beauties that if you're using it on, say, something like this, you do want it to dry quickly. You don't want that coming off everywhere. But you can see with just my wet cloth, I can just take the worst of that off. And I will take all of that off in a minute and just rub it under the tap. So you can see that although it dried really to be able to stamp it, it just comes off of there already, although it was dry. OK, so. <laughs> well you know you're worth it rosemary you know you're worth it okay i do hope that you're all staying very very safe and that you continue to do so i hope that you're all very well thank you for all your lovely comments lovely to see you all here today i will put the, this over onto the youtube channel later but i will have to change the front of it where my camera fell off so um excuses on that um but there you go. Have a great day. Hope I can see you on Wednesday morning at Evan, or if not, catch up with it afterwards. Take care. Hope the hairdresser works out all right for you, Jackie. Fiona, glad you were around. Um, thanks every mu very much for joining me, everybody. And um, I'll see you in the week. Thanks a lot then. Bye.